What up, Doc? You like the Great White North, eh? Go grab the guy, throw him on the ground, go commandeer that snow cat. Up here, we're about hockey and hard rock. And hard booze. Taking the visuals of Vancouver. Scary. Hop on a tour bus with us for a guided tour of Canada, which concludes with a happy and hectic homecoming. Well, it sure is nice to be home. Every day there was a battle. Oh boy, this is gonna be interesting. What about me? I gotta go through this. My life doesn't suck. I'm not a little punk anymore. Trust me. Trust me. No, he got no no key. I can't go out like that. They think that they're making fun of me. Sometimes I just like to steal. I had no idea it was going to be such a big deal. It's cool to grow old. This is my life. Life. But you had no idea. idea. This is the diary of Nickelback. Visiting TRL for the first time, please say hi to Nickelback. Silver side up. Congratulations on the record. Thank uh, you. It entered the Billboard charts at number two and stayed there, you know, it stayed there for 10 weeks. Was that a surprise for you? It's like a dream come true. We're this band that sold 10,000 copies of our first full-length album. And then all of a sudden it, it goes boom, but we're still the same band. I've been wrong, I've been down. January 8th, 2002. Vancouver is one of the most heavenly places on the planet. For some reason here, every single night, I go nuts. Hey! It does have a hole in it. Should. Sure. Hey! I'm thinking about that big cyber skin dildo. Usually we head downtown. We'll go and just see what kind of trouble we can get into. I know you had a dead animal around your neck. You want to wear it? I don't want this. I don't want a dead animal around me. And when the night uh, starts getting wild, I'm going to get stupid like I usually do. We'll party till 3 o'clock in the morning, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Oh, and you are a fighter, a a fighter! I go into different modes and into different phases. You know, if I'm in a bar and I'm partying and I'm having lots of fun with my friends, sometimes I can feel like a rock star. Shut that thing on. I ordered a lot of booze. <laughs> And it's all showing up at the studio, and now we've invited all these people. I'm coming. I'm coming. January 9th, 2002. Rip the throat out. Rip the tea. Yeah, there you go. Rip that throat out. We live in Vancouver, have been here for six years. Vancouver embraced Nickelback when we first started. What's this dust mean? Nickelback is, is as high as it is right now, and, and it's at the peak. There's our sold-out tour. This is the biggest we've ever been. Everything is very exciting right now. This one is sold to capacity. We're one ticket shot here. It's gonna be fun. One ticket shot. I want to see how far we can take this. When it comes to something that I really enjoy doing, I'm so driven and so focused for every free moment I have. I love to produce bands. Right now, I'm producing a band called Theory of the Dead Man. Yeah, don't, don't I, like that. I just need to clone myself so I can keep one here producing and send one with Nickelback. Where it all went down. This is the luxury recording studio. Oh, geez. No, you don't eat those. Even I don't eat these things. You go stir crazy in the studio after a while, and you have to do things to entertain yourselves. You're out. This is Bop It. This is your drinking best friend. Every time you screw up when you're playing the Bop It game, you've got to drink whatever drink is sitting in the middle of the table. January 10th, 2002. Now we're gonna go see my old nine to fiver, my old stiff. I really feel blessed to be where we are. Starving for a long time, playing in bands, trying to get a two-bit job, just barely make it for a while. I used to ride one of those bastards right there. I know lots of great bands that don't get the kind of opportunities that we got. You just try and hope for the best and see what you get. Rehearse and play gigs. You know, sometimes get like two, three hours sleep and have to be at the lumber yard. It's, you know, 6.30. There it is. Well, there's my lumber yard. That's my old boss's office right there. It's kind of depressing to think, you know, why me? Why me? <laughs> the gondola ride up across the mountains is 
pretty cool thing. Come this way. Nowhere fast, man. That's where we're going. I like to show that to people that I bring to the city. It's a getaway from everything else. Oh, here we go. We've been up that gondola ride a few times as a band, and we've played two shows up there. It means a lot to us because this is where we sort of began. It's a really cool ride, especially at nighttime because you can see the whole city line and uh, the lights of downtown. The elevation of the chalet is 3,700 feet or 1,100 meters above the city of Vancouver. Now, what's that body of water out there? That's English Bay. Pacific Ocean, brother. You're ruining my speech, brother. Oh, sorry, sister. Yes. Let her go. Whoa, we're going to get kicked off. We're just coming up to the second tower. We need to swing a bit oh, yeah. more. Here it comes. Oh, my God. Oh. Being Canadian, we're fans of hockey. <laughs> Just a part of life for us. Some of us more than others. Mike, Mike's gone astray at some point. The score is keep my shorts. <laughs> my team is the Detroit Red Wings. Some ass. That means nothing. I love watching Mike's team get beat. Thank you. Put the pressure on there, sucker. I wouldn't say that I'm an anti-Vancouver Canucks fan. Yeah. You don't want to be that guy that wears the Detroit jersey in Detroit and wears the Vancouver jersey in Vancouver just, you know, to be a suck-ass. Oh, here we go. Oh, Boom. Hey, no way. I don't know why he has a love for Detroit. It's frightening. I'll pay you a grand if you go do that. Who grab the guy? Throw him on the ground. Go commandeer that snow cat. We in the Nickelback camp like to pay people to do fun things. <laughs> He's going to go. <laughs> I tried to bribe one of our buddies, Aaliyah, to rip off a snowcat with a whole <laughs> bunch of people in a sleigh behind there for a nice sleigh ride. No permission, though. That was the deal. And he screwed up. Ah, you take. You ask for forgiveness later. If I give you a number value, that's what it's worth to me, and I want to see it done. We're not really trying to fool anybody. We're just four guys that are getting up there and just going as hard as we can possibly go. Yeah. That's what we do. Right. You think you know, but you have no idea. This is a diary of Nickelback. January 24th, 2002. 2002 will be very interesting year for us, I think. This trip across our home country of Canada is going to be sort of the big homecoming, so to speak. When the booking agent called us and told us what venues we were going to be playing, uh, some of these places were huge. Were anywhere from eight to 12,000 people every night. It was a three-week tour. The whole thing sold out in like four hours. We highly underestimated the power of Nickelback in Canada. We, we didn't think that we could put that many people into a room. It is going to be the first taste of the real dream. We've never had the opportunity to see what goes on back here, right? Yeah. You know, in a production. Yeah. These are eight foot flames. Would you say they're about eight feet? Ten feet. Ten foot flames. Apparently they tell me we have fire. So I'm going to try to get through without burning my ass. You can't put your face too close. You're not going to go off. But... If you're going to play to a place that big, you can't just go and put on the regular show. You've got to take this thing up to like motley crew levels, you know. You've got to have things exploding and fire's got to be going and, and it's got to be entertaining. This is Ryan's dad. I get more nervous when I play for friends and family. Nice hat, huh? Like that hat? Everybody likes that hat except for you. Mike and I, off of the road, have the quintessential brother-brother relationship. However, when we're on the road, for some reason, there's, there's a different connection. You just want to pick on your brother, and that's okay. He can take it. <laughs> Half of one's a rock show, which I'm very proficient at. I have to admit, I mean, everybody in the band is very different. That wants to make it look like a hat he thinks should be at a rock show. <laughs> we are quite opposite people, um, you know, on many levels, but we really meet on the stage and in the music because I think that transcends a lot of the little things. Okay. We ready? Nick, peek. We got everyone? Let's go do it. Whoa! Oh! Here's the hole! Right before we get on stage, everybody crowds around, the whole crew, the whole band, and then we do like a local toast.
and you you got the butterflies, and uh, and you're ready to go. Wait, wait. One, two, three, wait. Yeah, so good looking. I hate to see what that neighbor of ours looked like. Yeah, yeah, he's good looking, Matthew. <laughs> Catch all the great moments, don't you? Hey, you should go out there and watch the start of the show. Hey, you guys? We're not really trying to fool anybody. We don't wear makeup. Not one band member has a tattoo. Not one band member has a piercing of any kind. We're just four guys that are getting up there and just going as hard as we can possibly go. That's what Nickelback does. We're not reinventing the wheel. It's not rock and science. It's just rock and roll. <laughs> idea of the fact that my father left when I was probably two and a half and my brother Mike was probably four. I haven't performed in front of him yet. That might be a little strange. I might be uh, trying to choke a couple back, but it'll probably just add to the performance. deals with the whole idea of not having that father figure around while I was growing up. That person there to help you hit the baseball and teach you how to fight and teach you how to do all the things that fathers teach you how to do. You can't make your parents stay together. They want to be apart, you know, for a reason. So it's just out of your control. But it wasn't really until, you know, I was old enough to make decisions for myself that I finally was like, okay, I, I want to go see my father. I want to go develop a relationship with him. And we did. And I started to see his side of things instead of one side of the story. And then you just weed through the crap and you see try and sort of build your own story as to what really happened and why things went wrong. And um, now we have a great relationship. Flick that thing up, let's go for a beer, come on. January 25th, 2002. On tour, we become a, a pretty well-oiled machine. You wake up, you can barely talk. You're trying to remember what happened the night before. Showered. Unshowered. Showered. No shower. The first thing that happens is you do this interview. And so let's go through uh, what I can say, what I can't say. Can I say a can I do Then you probably do a meet and greet. Oh, yes. Have a bad year week here. So we're perfect, guys, just like that. And then you do the next interview. Oh, okay. Are you on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sometimes it's a little overwhelming. That's cool. okay, man. I wish I could understand Japanese. It's weird. Some journalists from Japan come down and stupid press. We have a big festival in Japan. You should come for that. Yeah, it's good. Come for that. Yeah. And we had that photographer that was just nut bar. Wow. Movie. Really? Yes. Special. This is 
Michelle Sato from Tokyo, Japan. Yeah, here we go. You're awesome, man. He was good, just bumbling film everywhere and frantically changing cameras and just being almost like comic relief, which was much needed at the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's how they do it in Japan. Getting to play with Jerry Cantrell, that was crazy. I think he's like one of the coolest people on the planet. Um, does anybody have an extra pick? You got one, Chad? What do you need? I need a heavy? spectrum. Yeah, heavy, totally. Yeah, totally. That's an 88, eh? All right, eh? <laughs> You know, we're speaking a little bit on the phone here and there, and we're talking about doing some collaboration. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. It was very fly by the seat of the pants. He's like, what do you guys want to do, one of your tunes or something? And I was like, no, no, what are you talking about? I <laughs> play them every night, let's do one of your tunes, come on. Yeah, I wasn't prepared. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. I just heard you were coming last Sorry, night. Hey. He was sort of snoodling over a whole bunch of different riffs. We wanted to play an old one. Hey, you know what? Yeah. That's, that's pretty easy to do. Yeah, let's do that. That's good. And then we went over, it ain't like that. That's the one. Yeah, that's the rocker. It just flew together so fast. smooth on stage and very comfortable on stage and instantly you feel like comfortable on stage I never thought it would be like that with something you just had in your CD player when you were a kid playing House and Chainsaw with Jerry Cantrell that was one of the coolest things in the world literally you could not kick the grin off my face. Mr. Jerry Cantrell! Give it up! connected with a lot of different types of people. When we see a large group of people singing the words to the song, it's a verification that we have done something right. That song deals with the universal topic of relationships, and I think everybody can identify with that. melody and the lyrics it was a magical combination those are the types of songs that typically catapult bands to the next level as they did for us i'm really excited and curious about the potential of this band we really look forward to seeing what kind of a ride we're on here things someday are going to slow down and i'll look back on these days and appreciate uh, how busy I was, I'm sure. Scene.